and welcome to Fire Away, Rudner Law's online employment law show focused on the employment law issues that matter to you. My name is Stuart Rudner. I'm an employment lawyer and mediator and your host of this season two, episode 12 of Fire Away, the last episode of the second season, and hopefully will be renewed for a third season. Fire Away streams online every month on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, our LinkedIn page, and our website. And past episodes are always available on Facebook, YouTube, and our website. If you're watching live today and have a question, we'd be happy to try to answer it. So feel free to either post a comment on Facebook or on YouTube or tweet to us at Runner Law. Today, I'm very excited to be joined by Greg Vertelman. Greg is a senior partner at The Talent Company. And today we're going to be talking about social media and the hiring process. How are employers using social media? Should they be using social media? And what should candidates be aware of when they're going out there looking for a new job? and how their social media platforms and profiles might come back to haunt them. So let's get right to it. Greg, thank you very much for joining us on Fire Away. Thank you, Stuart. Looking forward to uh, our conversation today. Now, this is one of my favorite topics. I've been active on social media for well over a decade now, and uh, I have enjoyed the fact that it's not only given me a chance to uh, develop a profile and a bit of an online personality, but it also continues to feed us at Rudner Law work because we see people doing things online that have consequences in the workplace. So in your role, and I want you to explain a bit about what it is you do, but in your role, um, how can social media be used in the hiring process? What have you seen? Sure, absolutely. So to start uh, and talk a little bit about what I do here at the talent company. So. Um, uh, there's two pieces of the business that I jump into, which is our career transition business. So helping individuals as they're looking for new work. And then we have our search uh, practice. So um, we're actively looking for candidates and working with our clients uh, in that, in that process. So those are, those are some of the things that, that, that I'm involved in. Um, and I've been doing that over 19 years now. Um, so to, I guess to answer your your que the question uh, against her was um, should they be used should individuals or should companies be using social media is that correct yeah well actually let's start off with how into a bit more of a debate perhaps about how they're using it and whether they should be sure so so the the how so I guess I would I would preface um, the pieces of this so so the how plays into um, taking a look at profiles um, and and I would really I just want to start by saying the, the reason why people would end up using uh, social media for search for things uh, like hiring. Uh, Facebook has over 2.7 billion users. LinkedIn carries over 575 uh, million users. It is a resources uh, to, to find and select the right people. Um, there are over, I'd say 80% of people use social media for a job search. Um, so how they're going on is they're subscribing and leveraging tools like LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter. We're seeing Instagram being used now as a, as a resource uh, to get started. And from what you've seen, are, are most companies using some sort of social media search in the hiring process? Yeah, and I think it's critical. Um, again, based on the number of people accessing uh, the accessing social media tools and, and product. Um, it has to be an essential part of any kind of recruitment process for organizations, does not matter what size of business. Uh, and that uh, it, it is an important piece. It is not the only piece. I would emphasize that though. Point. And it's interesting for me because I often get pushed back. I encourage employers to use social media, as you're saying, and for all the reasons you've just said, and uh, I sometimes get pushed back. Sometimes people say, well, yes, we, we check LinkedIn uh, because in people's minds, that's still the professional social media platform, but we won't check Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or anything else. Uh, sometimes people just don't think they should be doing it. Sometimes people think that there are privacy rights that preclude them from doing it. Uh, but for one reason or another, I often get that pushback and the line is drawn somewhere after LinkedIn. Uh, are you seeing that people are going beyond that or is it still really LinkedIn that's the focus? Um, I think LinkedIn still drives that brand of being very business focused. But again, that said, if you go, if you go online and just type in um, Facebook recruitment strategies, uh, you will find a ton of content on how to leverage and use Facebook, for example, 
uh, on um, uh, to to include and 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 round out your your search uh, for individuals. Um, again, seeing Twitter being used heavily and even even Instagram, <laughs> uh, to be honest. And then you yeah. have your, you, then you have your specialty and and uh, focused uh, social media groups or uh, or sites uh, to to and communities that are that are important to uh, incorporate. It depends on the level that you're looking for, I think, Stuart, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, some of those pieces of your overall strategy. Yeah, well, and I think you've mentioned the word strategy a few times. I think that's really important. I think part of the problem initially is that this was often seen as something you just kind of do ad hoc, and you know people would go through their regular screening process, but then someone in HR might say, oh, I'll, I'll check them out on LinkedIn or I'll do a Google search and see what I find. And it was very ad hoc. There was no process. And, and sometimes it was unfair because they might look one candidate up one way, but then not do the same for someone else. Uh, but it was often seen as an add on as opposed to part of the process, whereas I'm encouraging our clients to make this part of their process. And, uh, and like I said, I'm still getting some pushback to go beyond LinkedIn and look at things like Facebook or or Instagram, or, or I've even had people talk about Snapchat and whether they should use Snapchat in their recruiting process. Um, and I guess the, the question that we mentioned briefly earlier is, is should they? So uh, have you had any, well, I guess I'll ask it this way. When people ask you if they should be using social media in the process, what, what do you usually encourage them to do? So, so number one, it is a yes. Uh, they should, should be using it. Um, it plays into brand attraction, uh, drawing in uh, passive candidates to active candidates, uh, and you can get a really good you can get really good messages out on LinkedIn, um, especially for smaller businesses, for example, who may not have um, big marketing budgets or anything like that. Social media does uh, play a big part in uh, giving access to smaller businesses to to get really qualified candidates in, uh, and it and it evens the playing field, uh, I think, uh, as well. It's a great tool. Uh, so now you're talking about sort of doing the marketing and going out and trying to get people involved. What about just doing the check and saying if you have three candidates checking out their Facebook profile, their Twitter Twitter feed, and perhaps even doing a Google search on their names? You know, do you, do you recommend that companies do that? Hundred percent, hundred percent. It's an open resource and a tool. Um, so the good side of that is you could identify. Um, uh, individuals likes as you're trying to attract them. There may be things that help you in that uh, process to engage them with your organization. If you see what communities or uh, volunteer uh, work they may be doing, if your organization is in alignment with that, that can become part of the conversation in a uh, interview and, and uh, trying to track them into your organization. Um, as you're looking at uh, social media, the only side I, I play is, is, is you have to make sure you're not filling in the gaps on, say, for example, pictures that you see in interpreting a picture the wrong way. Um, there's still a piece where you have to interview somebody in person. That's, that's a fundamental to the process. You cannot rely on just LinkedIn to get the ideal candidates in or um, uh, lean on that too heavily for your uh, recruitment process. You just can't. Yeah, so, no, I, I'm not surprised. I know you and I have uh, generally similar mindsets. I'm not surprised to hear you say that because I, I also encourage people to use it. It's a publicly available resource. You should be using it. And I've often said to people, you're and actually, you're, you're probably negligent if you don't. Now, if you're in charge of hiring and you want to find the best candidate, you should use whatever information is available. Uh, but particularly with respect to social media, there are some risks and some caveats. So, I mean, I mean, the, the simple example that people often give me is, well, what if I get the wrong John Smith? Yeah, realistically, if you check out John Smith on Facebook, it's you're gonna have a hard time finding the right one. Uh, so you got to make sure that you're getting accurate information and also up to date information uh, as well. And I, I tell people this all the time: take what you see, especially on the more social platforms like Facebook or Instagram. I always say to take it with a grain of salt. I mean, I, I often think, uh, what would it be like if back when you and I were in, in undergrad, if around with a camera? And posted everything online and what would they see about us um so i always say to people you know take what you find with a grain of salt but if every single picture of a person has them holding you know a, an alcoholic drink uh or if every single post relates to drug use or something like that at some point you're going to get a sense of what this person's all about uh, yeah 100 uh, <laughs> um 
the uh, are you still shuddering about the, the camera being around when you were an undergrad? If the, I'm gonna I'm gonna just be quiet on that one. <laughs> um, the, 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 the bigger piece though is, is online again, you're right. Grain of salt. Um, you know, there's still that social and personal side that you're entering into when you're going on Facebook, people who are posting need to be very conscious of, of, of that. I, we coach that in our career transition side and building out your, your social media platform, how you should be perceived online and making sure you're building out your appropriate brand. You have to manage that throughout your career and and part of that is now playing into as soon as you're on any kind of social media platform being well aware of that um, you should have some some presence online um, and people should be able to find you fairly quickly um, i would say in the recruitment process if you can't find somebody on linkedin or any other social media site that you're using that might even be a red flag around um, uh, or it would lead to a red flag for me to just sort of say, where are they? Why don't they have presence online? That's, that's a really interesting point. And you're right. I've, I've had people say, well, I, you know, I've tried to check them out, couldn't find anything. And it was a bit of a red flag. And so we had somebody else we went with. Uh, but I'm intrigued by what you were saying about how you're coaching people to uh, develop their online presence. So uh, obviously I'm assuming you talk to them about LinkedIn, but do you talk to them about the other platforms as well? Oh, hundred um, percent. You know, when you're active in job search and, and people are uh, and you're engaging uh, people for for networking sessions to do outreach, um, you need to promote your brand. So I'll talk a little bit more about LinkedIn that way. And, and it is beyond LinkedIn, but you can you can post industry trend. Um, you can post things that may be of interest within within the communities that you're targeting. So if it's not for profit, pull pull data, show that you're present and commenting uh, with good thought on LinkedIn, those are important pieces of building out your your brand profile and right. connecting with like-minded uh, individuals. So what do you usually tell people about, you know, Facebook, I guess is still the best example. You know, what people tend to post about their family, about their activities, about their interests. What, what advice do you usually give people in that regard? Um, it depends on how far down the road you've gone with with mm -hmm. Facebook when you're starting your job search. There's you know, <laughs> stuff you can it's hard to start cleaning up. Yeah. Um, I would just say that on a, you know, in anything in a go forward, make sure you're, you're making sure that the pictures that people are taking uh, are appropriate or you're in environments uh, that will, um, that can play off of good values, play off of good, uh, good decisions. Um, posting a lot of uh, beer picks or, um, picks that can put you in a compromising position. How you're dressing is another another piece that plays into that. Uh, you just have to be really aware of, of how people may interpret. There's intent and in interpretation piece here. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard uh, to control how people are going to read you. I, I just remember about probably five or six years ago now where I was introduced to an HR professional and I, of course, went to LinkedIn to connect. And I, I was actually shocked that their profile picture on LinkedIn was them uh, it was clearly at an outdoor party. I think it was their company's summer party holding a beer. Yeah. And I wouldn't have thought twice if I saw that on Facebook, but on LinkedIn, it just didn't seem like the right place for it. It's, it's understanding the, uh, the medium. The worst, the worst are the ones where people have taken a good picture at a wedding and they've cropped out their spouse or partner that they're with. <laughs> and it's pretty clear. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, yeah, people, you're right. People have got to make it. Most people don't make a concerted effort. They kind of create a LinkedIn profile and they post stuff, but they never really take a step back and look at what is the third party or the neutral party going to see when they go there for the first time, uh, which is a big issue. The other issue, I guess, from, from the other perspective, from an employer perspective, because again, we're often asked, you know, can I go online? Should I go online? What do I do? Uh, and so we've already talked about take everything with a grain of salt. The biggest risk that we always identify for employers, though, is human rights grounds. And specifically, if you check someone out, particularly on Facebook or Instagram, you're probably going to see things that relate to protected grounds under human rights, like their, well, obviously their gender, but obviously their, their ethnic background, whether or not they have kids, whether they have a disability, whether they are religious and observant. All these things could relate to protected grounds. And uh, we've seen this many times within our firm where there's two candidates and one of them doesn't get the job and they turn around and say, well, I think it's probably because you checked me out on Facebook and you saw my post about how I'm trying to have kids or undergoing chemotherapy or something like that. 
Uh, and then the employer is in that very difficult position of having to prove a negative and prove that it wasn't part of the reason why they didn't hire the person. So one of the tips that we often give employers is have a third party do the online research so that you get a clean report, which just says, we check them out on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And here are the things that are relevant to their ability to do the job, but you filter out everything to do with their family, disability, religion, or anything else. Uh, because otherwise, I think as an employer, you're opening yourself up to a claim. That's interesting. Yeah, and that's uh, and it's 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 interesting, but it, it can become a very real issue. And from the individual perspective, of course, there's no reason why you shouldn't post those things. Uh, but and here's where the practical might be different than the theory. In theory, of course, you should never be discriminated against on the basis that you are that you have young children or that you have a disability. The practical reality, as we all know, is that it does happen. So as soon as you post things about those types of topics you do, do take the risk that you're going to be passed over for, for a position. Yep. No, for sure. Um, so that's, that's, that's a lot more work running into the <laughs> recruitment process for sure. It is. Uh, and it gets, and we've said it over and over process, you know, it should not be this ad hoc. I'm going to check them out on Facebook, or I think I know someone who knows them. So I'll check them out on Facebook. There should be a process. And from the employer perspective, make sure that whoever's making the, the hiring decision does not, not see any of those posts that could be interpreted as touching upon the human rights ground. Well, that's I mean, interesting because I would add to that there, I mean, we're seeing more tools coming into the market that help um, summarize candidate background and, and pull some of that material. So whether, whether it's by design or not, so it's created in a different country, they're not considering uh, some of the potential um, legal ramifications in other, other regions, uh, if I could say that. Um, but a really cool one that we've come across is, uh, is a tool called Discoverly. Um, so that's discover.ly. And uh, it does a, really, does a really good job of just summarizing some of the background checks and some of the, uh, the detail. Um, and it may work around that direct line to their, um, say, for example, their LinkedIn page. Yeah, no, that so makes a third party, sense. A third-party app, essentially. To summarize, uh, summarize the uh, the detail that has been picked up. Makes sense as long as they're giving you what you need and information that relates to the person's, you know, basically capability of doing the job and their appropriateness for the position, so that you, as the hiring person, can, can very honestly say, if you're ever cross-examined, I never saw their Facebook page. I never knew that they had young children or, or whatever the case may be. But it's interesting because I've had people ask me over the years, well. You know, if this person keeps repeating or you know, referring to their love of beer and every picture they have a beer in their hand, you know, can we choose not to hire them because of that? And on the one hand, I'll say, yes, you know, you can make a decision based upon that unless they are, they are an alcoholic, which is an addiction protected by the human rights code, in which case you've now discriminated against them on the basis of a protected ground. So again, to your point, if this screening app doesn't mention the fact that they have you know alcohol in every post then at least you're safe from that accusation uh, so that's it's finding a way to filter out the the information that you shouldn't be considering right Very cool. so um and of course as i said to you last week when we were preparing for this time flies by so i, I don't want to uh rush you but any, any other tips that you tend to give people when they're you know putting together their, their online profiles um one of the big ones that um that I always recommend staying away from are rants. People who go off on political or, or, or position themselves uh, and commenting on things or get drawn into uh, anything on social media, it can go so many different ways in how people are interpreting your, your commentary on, on that. Obviously, you, you stay away from anything that plays into discrimination, racist, uh, anything related to that. Um, so important people uh, are aware uh that once it's out there it's out there um the uh the other pieces just poor communication poor spelling mm. in their brand in their profile i think is a huge one um inappropriate photos we talked about that uh it's just about knowing how you want to want to be perceived uh it help you will help you lead into conversation and that also goes for let's say also for employers uh, the good stuff to put out there, again, just industry shares and likes, um, evidence of your work, 
uh, promoting uh, good material that you've you've done your 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 um, your awards and your recognition. I think is important. It's okay to talk about that. Don't don't go down the path of of highlighting uh, things you've bought or big big expenses, things that you've you've gone out and purchased. I think that plays negatively in people's view uh, or can. Um, and uh, just make sure that you're you're sharing good comments, things that have, people have said about you, your recommendations. Uh, curate that. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Now, now, have you seen situations where people actually lost out on job opportunities because of their online presence? Um, certainly. So in the work that I do, I get to talk to a lot of HR professionals. And uh, one of the better stories that I've gotten um, about people on social media. So uh, it's in a retail space. So the, uh, the director of HR uh, got a call from somebody who couldn't come in and uh, uh, on their uh, come in for work. Um, that director of HR and the individual who called in were connected on Facebook. So they got the call. person said, I'm sick. Um, right after that, there's a post saying, hey, extra long weekend by the employee who said they were sick, in which the director of HR had access to on Facebook. So saw their post. So it changes, it changes the conversation on, <laughs> on a Monday um, about how you're feeling. So, so sure. people just need to be aware of who they're connected to, how that plays out. Uh, and what they're what they're putting out there, uh, so it's awareness. Yeah, uh, look, I mean, it keeps us busy. It's amazing how many cases we're still dealing with where people posted things online and thought, well, my privacy settings are are set really high, so I'm sure it's never going to get back to my boss. It didn't even occur to them that one of their colleagues is their Facebook friend who very quickly took it to HR. It happens all the time, and then. There's a great example, I think a couple of years ago now, of a director of communications in a company who put, tweeted something incredibly inappropriate. There, there we go. Thank you, Rob, for, uh, for being on top of that. Uh, so this is just a horrifically inappropriate, offensive post. It's even worse because of the fact that this person was the employed, as I understand it, as a director of communications for this company. And she apparently tweeted this uh, while waiting at the airport, got on her flight, which is obviously a long one, got off, reconnected, found out that all hell had broken loose, and I don't think it took long for her to lose her job. Um, so this is the type of thing that if you, she's now going and applying for another job, may well come back to haunt her later on as well. 100%. Um, those, are just off, those are just awful posts to see, to be honest, uh, Stuart. And, um, you know, common sense, just... You can't take stuff back after it's out there. Um, not in that format that was uh, just presented. Hmm. Uh, and definitively, that would impact somebody's uh, future opportunities. No, I mean, there still seem to be two common misconceptions. One is that if you have privacy settings set, then you know things are you know your employer is not going to find out, uh, or that you can delete things if uh, you realize that you shouldn't have posted in the first place. And, Neither of those are really true. And I, I mean, I, I do a lot of presentations on social media in the workplace, and I love including memes like that or screenshots like that. And I update it every few months because there's never, no, never a shortage of new ones of people posting these things online. Um, and it's a lot of fun to go through them. So um, just before we wrap up, Greg, any other words of advice, either for employers or employees in the context of social media and, and the hiring process? Social media, so social media is a tool. Um, and like any tool that we use, if we don't use it the right way, we're gonna get hurt. Um, that's from the employer standpoint, as well as the individual standpoint. So uh, know how to use the tools appropriately, know, know what you want to get out of them, um, as opposed to, and, and, and don't go into anything without, without uh, testing it first. Those would be pieces that I would, would add. Just, your brand is so important in a, in a world where we share everything uh, and, and everything is open now. So uh, curate it, manage it. Critical. Yeah, I like that. So thank you, Greg. And I think that's, that's all the time we have. But I really appreciate you joining, uh, joining me today. I'm not surprising. It was a great conversation. For anyone looking to find out more about Greg, it's Greg Vertelman at The Talent Company. You can check out their website, which is or check Greg out on LinkedIn where I'm sure he's got an excellent profile with nothing inappropriate that you will find. 
thanks for being on. And uh, I guess Rob, now is my chance to fire away, right? Thank you, sir. So just concluded season two, episode 12 of Fire Away with Greg Vertelman. We talked about social media in the hiring process. And we also talked about some instances of people who were already hired, but uh, quickly fired after they posted things online. It's now 2020 and yet people still seem, still don't seem to understand the fact that what they post online can have consequences and cost them their job. It's amazing how often our firm is still involved in cases where people have done things online and now find themselves either fighting for their job or fighting to get some compensation because they claim they're fired inappropriately when the reality was that the employer had every reason to let them go. But people were shocked that what they did on their own time online can come back to haunt them. And one of my favorite things is when you, when you see one of these stories break where someone has posted something online and lost their job, I love tuning into talk radio the next day and listening to the conversation. And inevitably, at some point, somebody will say, that we have freedom of speech in Canada and the fact they lost their job is simply unlawful. And the reality is that's simply wrong. Freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. All it means is that you can't be criminally prosecuted for what you say, and even that has some limits. Uh, but the reality is you can be disciplined, you can be dismissed as a result of what you do online. Now, the default is that what you do on your own time is your own business, but the law has always said that if you do something that is off duty or while you're off duty, but it has an impact on your employer or on the employment relationship, you can be disciplined up to, and of course, including dismissal. But for example, if you are trashing your supervisor online, if you are making comments that make your colleagues uncomfortable working with you, if you say something that damages your employer's reputation or their brand, all of those things can justify discipline and in some cases, dismissal. That has always been the law, but of course we're seeing it applied far more often now because what people do on off duty is often online and there's a permanent record of it. So the bright reality is you can lose your job. You can also lose future, um, future opportunities. Thank you Elmo for being our poster child of what not to post uh, when you have a job, especially if you are friends with your boss on whichever platform you choose to post it on. Uh, you can lose your job, you can lose future opportunities, as Greg and I discussed in season two, episode 12. Employers are checking social media. They are going to see what you've posted, what you've said, pictures of you, pictures that you post, and they're going to make judgments because of that. So what I always tell our clients and anyone else that will listen to me, think before you post. Don't assume you can delete it later. Don't assume that because your settings are set to private, that you, therefore your employer is never gonna see what you posted because a lot of the cases we are dealing with started because somebody posted something online and one of their work friends saw it and quickly took it to HR and said, look what I saw and it led to consequences. You'd be amazed how often that happens. The best advice is still the same as it has been for years. Don't post anything that you would not want your grandmother to see if they were checking you out online. That's all the time we have for uh, my turn to fire away. And uh, that's, that's my two cents worth. And you got here today for free. That's all the time we have for season two, episode 12 of fire away. I want to thank everyone for tuning in and also thank Greg Vertelman for joining me for a great conversation. Our next episode is going to be on February 18th, again, on a Tuesday. That'll be the first episode of, of season three. We're going to be discussing two of my passions, hockey and employment law. And in this case, how they intersect, we're going to be talking about Don Cherry, Sportsnet, uh, and all the recent reports of coaches and abuse of hockey players, whether it be in minor hockey or in the professional ranks. If you have any questions about today's episode, feel free to email us at info at runnerlaw.ca. Remember that past episodes can always be found online on our YouTube channel, on our website, and on Facebook. And if you like our page or subscribe to our channels, you'll receive notifications whenever episodes are posted. I will invite everyone to keep in touch with us throughout the month. So check out our social media platforms, sign up for our newsletter, and otherwise keep on top of employment law. We try to get as much information as possible out there. But as I always say, please remember that none of this replaces proper legal advice. If you think that you might need an employment lawyer, please remember that you probably do and feel free to contact us particularly when it relates to social media issues like the ones we talked about in season two, episode 12 of Fireway. 
Thanks to Rob, Rebecca, and Mark for helping out as always. And thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.